is good, everybody? Welcome to an Epic My Damn Toys video tonight. I have your Monday Night Raw review as of, what the hell is today? July 6, 2020. Tonight, of course, was Monday Night Raw. We are approaching closer and closer to the horror show, whatever the hell that means, of Extreme Rules coming up in a couple weeks, I do believe. That is our next pay-per-view. We're building towards a Dolph Ziggler versus Drew McIntyre WWE Championship match. We got some other feuds going on. Coming into this show, wasn't too hype for the show. You know, the shows have just been really boring to sit through. Monday Night Raw is really hard to sit through. Three full hours. I find SmackDown to be way more refreshing I guess because it's only two hours. They got Matt Riddle over there now. It's just, I don't know, it's just a lot more enjoyable for me. But I'm going to let you guys know everything that took place on Monday Night Raw letting you guys know the matches that happened, the segments, everything in between. Tonight we did get a brand new US Championship. We're going to discuss that. We're going to talk about everything that happened on Monday Night Raw. My boy Kevin Owens is back on Raw and we got a lot of stuff to get through guys. So with that being said, let's go ahead and dive into Monday Night Raw and let you guys know if it was a shit show, a good show, or somewhere in between. So tonight's edition of Monday Night Raw does open up with the WWE Champion Drew McIntyre. He opens up the show talking about Dolph Ziggler, you know, running down Dolph Ziggler and talking about the de decision on the stipulation for their WWE Championship match at Extreme Rules and you guys already know. Out comes Dolph Ziggler because, you know, they gotta have their you know, they gotta have their little dialogue back and forth. They gotta get their rhetoric across between each other. Passionate opening between the two. I thought these men were doing a great job cutting promos back and forth on each other. Dolph Ziggler, you know, saying he's gonna keep it a secret between the stipulation for their match at Extreme Rules. Good stuff from both guys. I actually enjoyed this back and forth. The opening segment of Raw was a strong one. I think they did a pretty good job here. Out of nowhere, Dolph Ziggler pretty much says, you know, I've got somebody here who's been exactly where you are before. You know, he talked about his past and being fired and, you know, talking about his past friends. And out comes none other than the man that has kids. We got Drew McIntyre's old nemesis, or old friend, I should say, Heath Slater from Three Man Band come out. You guys already know that Heath Slater was let go of the company a few months ago. He talks about their past. He says that he called him every day when Drew was fired. Where the hell was Drew when Heath was fired just a few months back? Very good promo back and forth. Definitely go look up this segment. I thought that Heath Slater did an excellent job in this role. He says he wants what he deserves. He shoves Drew. He slaps him. You know, he's real fired up and pissed off. You know, you can tell there's a lot of passion behind this promo. I think these guys did an excellent job talking to each other. So we go to a commercial. We come back from commercial and we have an impromptu WWE Championship match or a match at all. I don't even know if the title was on the line, but Drew McIntyre hits Heath Slater with a Claymore kick. One, two, three. That was it. Ziggler beats down Slater after the match, and then Drew McIntyre comes to save Slater, and that was the end of the segment. I thought this was an excellent opening to Monday Night Raw. You could see the passion. You could see Heath Slater's got the fire in his eye here. I'm not sure where we go from here. You know, if Heath Slater's going to be involved, I doubt it. You know, they, they hugged after this segment was over, so I guess it was just like some passion from Heath Slater for getting fired and then Drew McIntyre had to, you know, set him straight there, but this was good stuff by all three men. All three men involved in this segment was a banger. Great opening to Monday Night Raw. So out comes Bayley and Sasha, the SmackDown Women's Champion and the Women's Tag Team Champions. You got Bayley Doe straps out there. They're mumbling and jumbling about the, you know, becoming Raw Women's Champion. Sasha Banks talking about Asuka, blah, 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 blah. Speak of the devil, out comes the Raw Women's Champion, Asuka. You know, no one's ready for Asuka. She runs down both women, as we've seen over the past few weeks. And then we get a returning Kyrie Sane. So a bunch of returns on this night. I mean, we got a bunch of stuff going on. KO returning, Kyrie Sane returning, Heath Slater returning. Returning. All these returns coming in. Then we get a matchup between Sasha Banks and Kyrie Sane. Very, very physical matchup. Pretty solid football game here between the two. A lot of craziness ensuing. Bailey causes a disqualification. So therefore, Kyrie Sane does win, but then a bunch of craziness ensued. And I, I mean, we were diving to the outside. Kyrie Sane coming, dropping the elbow on all the women to the outside. Pretty cool stuff going on. Wasn't invested in it, but it was a pretty physical and good football match. If you guys want to go back and check it out, I would definitely recommend it. Sasha Banks and Kyrie Sane are two of the best women in the division, so you know, yeah, 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 you know. Cut backstage, and we have a little interview type segment with uh, Big Show and the Viking Raiders talking about their matchup with Randy Orton and their six man tag match. You guys know the Big Show and Randy Orton are kind of feuding right now, legend killer ish kind of going on right now with Randy Orton and Big Show. So this was just a nothing segment, you know, still goofing around with the Viking Raiders and bowling balls and stuff in this segment. Didn't really care too much for this. 
Next up, guys, is my boy KO. The KO Show is back on Monday Night Raw, and his guest is Seth Rollins. This was great because I love seeing Kevin Owens and Seth Rollins on my television sets. They're two of the best parts of Monday Night Raw. Their delivery is phenomenal. They know what they're doing in the ring. They're two of the best that this company has to offer right now. So they're out there. They're talking about their Mania feud. Kevin Owens actually gifts Seth Rollins a KO Mania 4 shirt from their match where Kevin Owens did defeat Seth Rollins at WrestleMania. They bring up Rey Mysterio. They t I, I gotta say Hey guys, Seth Rollins brings up the Rey Mysterio sacrifice and greater good thing every single week. And I don't think he knows what the hell he's talking about. I think he's just kind of mumbling off some ish and just kind of saying whatever the hell he wants to say and repeating and regurgitating the same ish over and over. And I love Seth Rollins, but I don't think that WWE knows what they're saying. They're just, re you know, reusing the same phrases and the same verbiage over and over and over again. But anyways, uh, they pretty much make it to Clarence. Kevin Owens says, well, what about if the winning team in the tag team match later picks the stipulation for Rey Mysterio versus Seth Rollins at Extreme Rules. KO and Seth Rollins pretty much agree on this. You know, Seth Rollins is like, you know what, you're on. And then a big brawl ensued. Rey, Murphy, KO, Rollins, Dominic all get into a big brawl and we go to commercial. Coming back from commercial, guys, we got something out of WWE Universe mode. We got KO and Ray taking on Rollins and Murphy. Saw a little match, you know, nothing too crazy out of the ordinary. I do enjoy seeing Kevin Owens back in the ring. I love Rollins as well. All four men in this match are great, you know. I, I don't necessarily want to see them all four together, but when you got all four of these guys in the ring, you know, you're going to get some good magic. About that time, you know, we're nearing the end of the matchup, and out of nowhere, here comes Aleister Football Black. Now, this is something that I want to take note of. Aleister Black comes out. He was actually rumored to be in this matchup with Rey Mysterio over Kevin Owens. He comes out kind of limping, you know, showing that he was attacked backstage. Dominic comes out of nowhere, gouges Murphy's eye. Murphy rolls back inside the ring. I don't know what... Okay, if you're in a wrestling football game, right? You're out there wrestling, you're doing your own thing. You go to the outside and you get your eye gouged. Why in the blue hell would you roll back inside the ring knowing that you could get taken advantage of? You know what I'm saying? It just makes no sense. That's like that's like getting hit with like you're on the outside side or you know you're on the stage you get hit in the skull with a chair and then you run down and get in the ring so your opponent can pin you what kind of sense does that football make anyways ignoring that logic gap ray hits the 619 hits a splash and kevin owens and ray mysterio win the tag team match picking the stimulation and ray mysterio gets on the mic and he says he chooses an eye for an eye match and i don't know what that means wwe even tweeted saying they don't even know what that means so I guess this company just doesn't know what the hell's going on. Rey Mysterio and Seth Rollins in an eye for an eye match at Extreme Rules is set. We just gotta figure out what that is, but I'm guessing that Seth Rollins is probably gonna end up wearing an eye patch for months to come. Next up, guys, we have the unveiling of the brand new United States Championship. Bobby and MVP in the ring talking about the U.S. title, Apollo Crews. This thing made no sense to me, okay? I'm not talking about the title right now, but unveiling a new United States Championship, and the United States Champion wasn't even in the ring. Apollo Crews wasn't even on this show, so I don't know what that was about. I don't know why they did that or why they chose this day. Maybe because July 4th was a couple days ago, and they wanted it to be like, oh, look, new championship around July 4th, because that makes football sense. But anyways, MVP un unveils the new championship. I'll pull it up on the screen so you guys can check it out. And I feel like, you know, I feel like this championship is not necessarily bad. I don't think it's bad. I don't think it's great. I feel like it's just meh. I feel like it's just, you know, whatever it is. I will say that the p the pictures that WWE posted or the way it looked in the ring is not as good as it looks, you know, in the promo images or the other images that WWE shared online. But, you know, I guess it is what it is. I'm not thrilled about it. That's why I put the MDT U.S. Championship here. I think my championship is better than that one, but I honestly like the older version better. I just like this. This is so classic. There's a reason they've used this design for 17 years, man. I mean, this is just so clean, and I took, you know, some inspiration from the current U.S. title, or the older, I guess, now it's not, and now it's not the current U.S. title, but I don't know. I would love to know what you guys think of the championship down below. I've seen people that love it, and I've seen people that absolutely despise it. I, however, am down the middle. You know, I like the old one better for sure, but it's not a bad looking title. It's just meh to me. I don't know. It, 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 I'm sure it'll grow on me just like every other championship does. It definitely looks better than the Intercontinental title. I don't like the way the Intercontinental title looks, but I think the older US title was much better, but you know, it is what it is. I feel like filling in the top part of the gold, like where the stars are by the WWE logo, if you filled that in with like a royal blue or navy blue color, I feel like the title would pop a little more, but anyways, out 
out of nowhere, none other than Ricochet interrupts this match. I was like, oh my god, why the hell is Ricochet out here interrupting this segment? But we cut to commercial, and when we come back, we have a Bobby Trashley and MVP matchup taking on Ricochet and his tag team partner. You guys already know, my boy Cedric Alexander. So my boy Cedric Alexander getting on TV here. I like these guys as a tag team. I think if they built them up correctly, this would be a great pairing to be together here. Their styles mesh greatly. I think if these guys were in NXT, they would be treated fantastically. Gotta fix it there. But anyways, Bobby Lashley and MVP do defeat Ricochet and Cedric Alexander. Of course they do, but set for Extreme Rules, Apollo Crews versus MVP for the new U.S. title. And uh, yeah, that's about it for this. I don't know why MVP introduced the title over Apollo Crews, but it is what it is. You guys can let me know what you think of the title down in the comment section below. Up next, we have a six-man tag match. We got Randy Orton, Andrade, and Angel Garza taking on Big Show and the Viking Raiders. And Orton pins for the W. You know, I wasn't invested in this. I don't really care to see Big Show and Randy Orton feuding. I will say the mic work has been solid. The backstage interviews and stuff have been solid. Ric Flair being in Randy Orton's corner has been pretty interesting. And, you know, having him be kind of like his hype man has been pretty cool. But uh, in 2020, I just don't want to see Big Show and Randy Orton feuding here. But I did like one moment... At one point in this match, Randy Orton was on the outside and Angel Garza kind of like smarted off to him, but he got in his face and he like cursed at him. I think he dropped an F-bomb or two. Getting in his face, I thought that was pretty interesting. I like to see that heelish side of Randy Orton. Or the, you guys know what I'm saying. Randy Orton getting in people's faces, you gotta love that. But Randy Orton, Angel Garza, and Andrade do get the win here. I wonder if we're gonna form a new little stable here. I, I don't know. I guess we'll have to see about that, but that is what took place. Now we cut backstage and I found this very interesting. MVP recruiting Cedric Alexander, trying to recruit him into Bobby Lashley and MVP stable that they got going on into their little team they got going. And he's carrying around the US Championship, which I thought was very weird. Again, the US Championship was chilling on the apron in this little practice ring backstage where these guys were talking. I found that very weird because you're not the US Champion. I know he pinned Apollo Crews and he declares himself champion, but I just thought that was weird and like, I don't know, man. Anyways, Cedric doesn't really fall into it, but I guess we can see what happens with it. I'm kind of interested to see if they actually pull the trigger on this. You know, him turning his back on Ricochet, turning heel, could be very big for Cedric Alexander's character. Could get him on TV more. I don't necessarily want him in that role, but if it gets him on TV more and it gets him to expand on his character, maybe we could see a really cool heel turn by Cedric, get him on our TVs more and build him up a little bit, but that would be pretty cool. I don't know. I guess we'll have to see where it goes, but MVP was trying to recruit Cedric Alexander. Now this next part kind of broke my heart, guys, because we had a singles match between Billy Kay and Ruby Riot, and Billy Kay beat Ruby Riot in like five minutes. Very quick match again. Ruby Riot continuing to lose on television. Very sickening to see. Imagine like losing 15 matches in a row after you being, you know, you, after you come off an injury where it seemed like you were off for like a year. You know, everybody kind of forgets about you, and then you come back and you make this big appearance. You got your hair redone. Your hair's all grown out. You got all these new tattoos. You're looking great, and you lose like. 80 matches in a row to talents like Billy K. Man, I don't know. Ruby Riot's way better than this. She's definitely a better promo. She's a better wrestler. She's a better character. She she looks better as, you know, like a gimmick to me in the ring. Uh, just, just upsetting, man. Much like Liv Morgan. I don't know. I don't know, man. You gotta do something with these people. You gotta do something with these ladies, man. Ruby Riot losing again here to Billy K in a nothing match that's just like, bro, why? Why? I don't know. Anyways. Now it's main event time. We got champion versus champion. Sasha Banks in Bailey's corner and Kyrie Sane in Asuka's corner and my freaking ponytail to my Bailey figure just fell off and this shoulder will not hold this title up. I tried for 20 freaking minutes. It won't stay. I'm I just forget it. I'm leaving it where it is. Champion versus champion right here. Very good match. I thought this was a great TV match between two ladies. You got two of the best women in the entire industry, probably in all professional wrestling across the entire world right here going at it in the main event of Raw. I thought it was very good stuff. High drama, high intensity between both with women, all four women actually, because Kyrie Sane and Sasha Banks would get involved. The end of the matchup, however, did end kind of lame because Nikki Cross comes out and she starts banging on the plexiglass from like six feet away from Bailey, and Bailey acts all freaked out and she gets kind of distracted. Asuka would then lock in the Asuka lock. They would do some rolling up back and forth, schoolboy stuff like that, and then Asuka would win one, two, three after a after you know one of those roll ups, kind of like locking in a submission and then kind of sitting down, you know 
out where she's in a pinfall situation. And that was it. One, two, three, it's over. Like I said, solid football match, but just, I don't know, man. And the, the drama was, th was there. I just didn't like the ending of it. But I guess we're continuing the Bliss Cross Applesauce storyline between them, Bailey, and Sasha. But I don't know, bro. It is what it is. That was it for your Monday Night Raw. Overall, you know, just, uh, just the shows just kind of all blend together. There's some segments that are individually good and some matches that are okay. It's just overall, when I try to sit through the show, it's just super hard to sit through everything. I think there's individual moments and individual talents that do well, but then again, as a full show, it's just very hard to sit through, man. With all the ads and the three-hour show, it's just like it drags by. But anyways, that was your full Monday Night Raw review. I would love to know what you guys think down in the comment section below. What did you think of the U.S. Championship? What did you think about KO returning? What the hell is an eye for an eye match? I guess we're going to find out, but that is going to do it for the video, guys. Thank you so very much for watching. I hope you guys did enjoy the Monday Night Raw review. Let me know what you think of everything down in the comment section below. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at my damn toys. Need to get the Twitter game up, so definitely follow me on Twitter if you want to watch as I react to the show live. I tweet about stuff that's happening real time, so if you guys want that feedback immediately, go follow me on Twitter. But thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.